Welcome back to another episode in the garden. We're going to get right into it. So, I was a denomination hopper for a long time, for those of you that don't know. And had been through, well, I was already an ex-Roman Catholic, slash ex-Reform, slash ex-Anglican, slash ex-Lutheran, slash ex-Baptist. You get the point. Lots of denomination hopping. And then a couple years of burnout slash apathy. And, you know, even in the pinnacle, I, I had the thought of check out the sacramentals. And throughout most of this denomination hopping journey, in my mind, I was pretty sure, at least I know popery isn't true. Like, at least I know that Roman Catholicism is false, right? And uh, obviously, I don't currently hold that opinion. And we're going to talk a little bit about how I got there. Um, in order to keep this pretty short, we'll just touch on the topics broadly, but I'll probably make some more in-depth videos in the future. Um, so first, the final salvation controversy and how it led me to leaving. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, John Piper said, and he tweeted this, salvation is not by faith alone, kill your sin. And, um, Mark Jones came to the defense of John Piper when a bunch of people started calling him a heretic, and then R. Scott Clark went against Mark Jones, and pretty much ever since then, there's been a debate in the Reformed world on if it's correct to say that all of salvation is by grace through faith alone, or if just justification is by grace through faith alone. Now, to explain what I mean by all of salvation versus justification is, in Reformed theology, there's a thing called the ordo salutis, or the logical or actual order of events, like um, first someone is predestined, and then they are regenerated, then they have faith. Um, if you're not reformed, don't worry about it, but I'm just talking about that. And um, basically, the reformed world couldn't agree on if sanctification was by faith alone, because R. Scott Clark's basic contention was that sanctification is part of salvation. So, it therefore must be by grace alone through faith alone. And Mark Jones and John Piper um, and quite, and I, I believe John MacArthur would say things more like, or uh, less so John MacArthur. John Piper made the most explicit statements, but John Piper made statements like, um, on the last day, you, you will be saved by your works and your faith. And faith doesn't save you, it justifies you, was like a, a, a thing he was careful to nuance. And, you know... I hadn't really thought about it like that, um, because, at the time, because, as you probably know, the main thing that's focused on is forensic justification, and once you're no longer going to hell, um, you don't really ask very much about, like, how it's all gonna get worked out, and how you're gonna get made into not a sinner, but, um... It turns out that no one's really debating whether going from somebody who has a sinful nature to being glorified is part of salvation. And I eventually came to the conclusion that people were ultimately just fighting about if the legal part of salvation 
rather than the ontological part or um, part that involves your being and what you're like. Um, is it, did we save the gospel at the Reformation by saying, no, 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 hang on, hang on. We saved the gospel at the Reformation by going, hang on, hang on, hang on, everybody. While salvation is attained by works, yes, and that's something Francis Turretin said, um, Reformed theologian that a lot of us look up to. So, another reason that that was... I mean, there were, there, were, there were a lot of quotes from, you know, big-name theologians on both sides of this issue, which made it even more complicated. But, um... Did we salvage the gospel by figuring out that this part of salvation properly belongs as described at oh, is the B. I don't know if you can see it. That's, it's a good thing. It means it's pollinating. And those bottles right there are they're an experiment. It, it, you'll, you'll find up. Ah. You'll find out more about what that experiment is in future episodes. But, um, basically, I got to the point where I was like, bro, come on now, this is ridiculous. Like, uh, I, I, how, 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 is all of true Christianity and finding the right church really hinging on a debate of the correct Ordo Salutis, or not even a debate on if works are necessary, but just how, and we've split into so many groups over that. So, that's reason number one, and then number two is, to put it briefly, I wanted to prove popery false, and papists like myself like to claim that if you pray the rosary, you're very likely to become Catholic because Mary just might show up to uh, bring you some grace. And I prayed a rosary for the purpose of spiting Roman Catholicism to show that nothing would happen and I wouldn't get the uh, signal graces or whatever that they promise from the 15 rosary promises. And I know a lot of, um, especially people that were influenced by Dominicans, held those promises to be authentic. I think they are. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm going to prove popery false. And then I was playing Pokemon Go, and while I was outside catching Pokemon, I heard on the other side of me, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and I was like, whoa, are you a priest? And he was like, yep, because I was at, let's see if we can zoom in on it. I was at that church right there, catching Pokemon. Yep, right there. See, I can still fit in with the Protestant world. I can and say Protestantisms, like, I can tell you and show you the place that I got saved, <laughs> but, um, no, I'm kidding, I'm, I, I, I believe that Protestants are real Christians, of course, I'm very ecumenical, but I, I, I'm about as ecumenical as you can be, uh, without getting ex excommunicated, <laughs> because, obviously, I'm gonna have a lot of sympathy for what I was, but, anyway, I was basically, like, Alright, man. I don't have a very good academic explanation for this. And, there, 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 don't get me wrong, there was an eventual academic explanation, and, like, um, if you look up church history documentary on YouTube, you'll see, like, the, for the, the main, you know what? I'm gonna link it in the description of this. Check it out. And it has some good info on why Rome. And I think the more you get into history, 
And the more honest I've gotten with the biblical text, the more it's become the uh, obvious answer. And with that, I'm going to close this up so I can finish watering and get ready for mass today. Thanks for watching. God bless.